Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Limerick Historical Society show. Uh, we're here tonight broadcasting as usual, and it's hosted by me, Tony Brown. And of course, I have with me, uh, this is on Lair, I should say, on Lair Media TV. if you want to get to see what we're talking about or to come back in it next week. And uh, you can also go to our YouTube channel, which is Lear Media TV. And please subscribe. It's free. So press your little button down in the corner, press the little red button, and uh, you'll subscribe to the channel. As I said, it doesn't cost you anything. You won't be billed for it. Anyway, again to, tonight, I have with me uh, Tom Durham. And Tom, you're welcome along to the programme again Thank anyway. You. And uh, we've covered different things at different times. And yeah. uh, some, some people will say we're only waffling. But anyway, not to worry. Well, yeah. Tonight, yeah. <laughs> tonight <laughs> I want you to talk about me. A subject that um, is dear to both our hearts is uh, local histories. Yeah. As you know and I know, there's so many of them have been written over the years. A lot of the people have died, unfortunately. Yeah. At least the books were completed. That's right. And then there are a few that were never finished. Yeah. And which is a, a pity as well, you know. I never, I never started. No, it's a pity, yeah. you know, it's a pity. Yeah. Um, yeah, we were talking about Mark Tierney today, and like people like Mark Tierney, uh, you know, Frank Reed and John Sheehan, uh, John O'Connor, they all did history before the internet, you know, when it wasn't so, nowadays it's much easier, you know, search things on the internet and find misinformation, of course, as well as information. But uh, it's amazing the history that are produced with little, you know, electronic backup, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, yeah, and Mark, yeah. Mark Tierney's book we talked about today, that's Maru and the, the, the history of yeah. Maru. Yeah. 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 It's very difficult history. to get that now. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I, I was telling somebody yesterday, when it does come up, it fetches big money. Yeah. For a book, I said, that it probably cost 30 shillings when it first came out or something like that. Yeah, I got a spare copy and I discovered Margaret Franklin told me that the one that the library had was stolen. So I gave them my spare copy. So, I mean, they, they didn't even have a copy. It was just so scarce. Tried, it, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because that um, did happen now with another book. I'm jumping again here now, but I remember a few years ago, a man had a book known as, uh, it, it was a catalogue really, mm -hmm. called The Sale of Limerick. Yeah. When the Earl of Limerick sold off Limerick, the whole city sold off in parcels. Mainly, it, it tried to sell blocks, as they were. You know, it's hard to believe somebody could actually own. This is the freehold now he was selling. Yeah, yeah. People, not the yeah. building. Well, some buildings were included. Mm. And the book, a huge catalogue. And I remember in the library, they were missing four pages. Yeah. And luckily enough, <laughs> didn't I acquire a copy of it much mm. years, much later. So I went down. And I allowed them to copy the four pages that were missing to put into their copy. I, 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 love, the way, I, I love the way you say you acquired one. Oh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds mysterious. <laughs> and, and, and I'm the one that says never, never give a loan of a book to anybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially you. <laughs> but no, it's um, actually that's a book that could be reproduced with footnotes, you know, um, of where, where, the, where the plots are today and what. You know, with modern technology, even on the internet, if you put up the pages and show images of what's there today, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because the Federation of Local Histories did a project about, God, it must be nearly 30 years ago now. I remember it just be on RTE sometimes before when they had nothing kind of else before programs started. Yeah. What they did was they got everybody to go out and take a, first of all, the Lawrence prints, which were most yeah. people are, are, are familiar with. Show the Lawrence prints you were taken at the turn of the century mm. and put up a modern day photograph yeah. of what is there now as opposed to what was there. Mm. And it gave you a great insight as to what, what was there, what the buildings were like before. Yeah. You know, yeah. Because as you know, we've lost so many buildings over the years. Mm. You know, but luckily okay. enough, they're in these histories, these local histories we're talking about. Yeah. There That's are right. lots of, of photographs of places yeah. that have gone yeah. over the years. But um, there was another program on T.G. Cahar. They took postcards, John Hind postcards. And, they, you know, a young boy with a donkey. And they tracked down the, the yeah, family. Yeah, or, yeah. yeah. So they, 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 they never kind of finished them. You yeah. know, they, they just showed it like uh, they tried to create the photograph at yeah, times. They, they could have done more. They could have made another program out of 
interviewing the people and, and about the background of it, like, you know. Good, good. Uh, I, I find that with who do you think you are and some of the programmes, they seem to concentrate on either the, the paternal line or, or, the, or yeah. the maternal line, but they never seem to finish it right up to date. No, and to do kind of, whether they're afraid of being sued or whatever. But Probably. They, they mm-hmm. kind of take the highlights. They don't give the full story, just take no. highlights out of it, yeah. Yeah. You didn't explain properly how how Jimmy came to be or who his father, you know, to finish off and say, and of course his father died in 1937, and they leave yeah. it that they don't kind of follow it up. I wonder, one of the most fascinating ones was um, I can't remember who it was. She was an actress in America, and they traced her family back to uh, she was her great great grandmother would say was a slave, and she married the slave owner. And the slave owner died, and she became uh, the slave owner. She inherited the slaves then, and she she found out that her ancestor was a worse a worse owner, uh, like. owner than than her previous the previous yeah, guy. Yeah. She, you know, which often happens. You know, they Good say about the, the Irish with worse landlords, or you know, oh, or, yeah. or employers. But, um, well, as you know, most of the, the landlords get the blame in Ireland, especially as being cruel. Yeah. But as you know, the middlemen are the, yeah. the owners of, of the, what would they call them, the fellas that looked after the estates. Yeah. Like, yeah. The ag- name, agents. Yeah, trenched down in, uh, on the Lansdowne yeah. estate. And some of them were horrible people, the way they treated yeah. tenants. Well, you but, see, uh, like, I think we discussed that before, but like, the, the problem with is, is simplifying the famine or simplifying the war of independence. Simplifying the famine into saying, oh, the English were terrible, and this genocide uh, argument. Um, like, okay, the English weren't, weren't benign in it, but like, it was the Gambian men and the fellas who profiteered out of it, the Irishmen, and who, it was Irishmen who evicted people. Uh, you know, the, to say it was the English, the English, there was often Irish, Irishmen living in England, like, oh, yeah. what, you, what you consider. Uh, an Englishman, like, you know, a lot of the Irish have become more English than the English themselves. And um, like to say the England caused the famine, well, they didn't uh, do much to, to and, and it suited them, to, the outcome yeah. of the famine suited them. But I think it's a bit simplistic to say, you know, that England should, um, should apologize for the genocide, you know. I mean, Tony Blair kind of apologized for their mishandling of it, which was what they did, like, you know. Yeah. But the uh, certainly the middlemen, like they took land, and like the middlemen weren't always big estates. Like there were small landholders who might have three or four tenants. Like I told you before, the farm I grew up in was owned by a man called Cassidy, and he had, oh, I'd say about seven or eight small subholdings of half acres on his land, and he is when it suited him, he got rid of the tenants. You know when the he, he paid for their immigration well, to get him, get him off the land uh, so he could have a, uh, his land with no tenants on it, you know, uh, so it suited him. So that happened all over the country, you know. And you that, how the, did he get hold of that land? You said, because Cassidy isn't the name of the associate now, back again. No, he was a, a plowman that came into, to, um, there was Kidgel who was, who was friendly with the Knight of Glynn, um, who was an agent for the Knight of Kidgel in Glynn, and Kidgel was a judge at a ploughing championship, and Cassidy won the ploughing championship. He was in Castle Troy, New Castle Troy, actually near Limerick, and the, the he was a ploughman for for uh, a, for a farmer near near New Castle outside in Castle Troy, and he won the ploughing championship. So Kidgel brought him to Glynn, and he became a kind of a sub agent for the United Glynn, and United Glynn or a farm manager, and United Glynn couldn't pay his wages. So what the United Glynn then did was gave him land in lieu of his wages. He was an overseer on the roads. He kind of, be, by hard work and that, and he, um, and then he had three daughters and a son. The son was involved in a, uh, a murder or a manslaughter, and he, he had to skip it off to America. So there was three daughters left, and the three daughters died and, and didn't have any um, heirs, so the name died out. But uh, Cassidy, had he was on the bounds of the Knight of Glen's estate and he had um uh subtenants and one one woman went to town one day and he burned down her house. She was the last she was a widow and she came back and she she put a widow's curse on him. 
Oh, do you believe in these things or not? And she said, there wouldn't be seen, seed or breed of the Cassidy's left in Glynn. And people often pointed to this, that his daughter's never married, you know. I mean, it's always after the fact that these courses oh, come out. Yeah, yeah, you know. So, I mean, but it makes a good story. But anyway, there isn't seed or breed of the Cassidy's. And when I was young, some of the family uh, descendants in America came back, some of the daughters. Uh, I mean, like, it was like coming, like we were, uh, I suppose, ragamuffins growing up in the farm when he came back. I remember he had a watch that he could press a button on and the light came on. We thought it was like something out of the space age, you know, and the time came on and all these things, he's, cameras and stuff like that, we, you know, tape, record, tape recorders, which we'd never seen before. He was a descendant of these Cassidy's. He was, yeah. yeah, he's, yeah. No, his, his wife was. His wife, descended yeah. Descended of one of the women who went out, yeah. Yeah, because I'd, I'd never heard that name, no, but you wouldn't hear it really better. No, 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 no. You know? I, think the, I think they came from Scotland, actually, originally. Yeah, well, I would associate Cassidy with, with, with especially with Donegal. Yeah. If you remote yeah. the Cassidy's in Donegal. Yeah, but this, yeah. actually, funny, as you mentioned, uh, Maroon Bohar, that's here in his book. In that, he covers what's known as the Tan Curry estate, the yeah. Tan Curry evictions. Mm. There were big evictions in the, in the Tan Curry. Even, um, well, I can't think of what's the meat and the tira. Um, what was the priest? I can't think of the priest oh, yeah. um, involved with them. Um, that he, they yeah. were evicted yeah. from the Tan Curry yeah. estate. Yeah. And uh, there, there were big evictions from the, even the, the family who were well known in Limerick afterwards, the Keys family. One of them, uh, one of them was a teacher. I remember. One of them became mayor of Limerick. Yeah. They, they came. They were, were um, victims because there's two ways to spell on keys. That's right. There's the Church of Ireland where there's K, the K E Y S and K E Y S and K E Y S. Yeah. So there's um there's still a lot of keys family around around the Glenstall Maru area. Yeah. But this family keys came into Limerick, and one of them I, th I think if I, my wife says me lies, uh. He got a job above in uh, as caretaker above what was known looking after the books for Mount St. Lawrence. Oh. Above opposite Mount St. Lawrence Square. Yeah, the house had gone. It was knocked down a few years ago. Yeah. Small house was kind of sticking out onto the road. Was it the keeper's he was, house? You what? Was it the keeper's house? Yeah. One of the keys got a job there. I'm the, mm. I'm a, I was checked that out now. He was keys. I think it was the mayor's father. Because uh, yeah. one of them I remember was a school children in St. Brendan's School. Above mm -hmm. near me, but anyway, those keys came in. They came in after Tan Curry Estate. Yeah. They had been evicted, mm -hmm. and um, there was a lot of evictions. That Tan Curry just came in. Lot Tan Curry was lawless, so I actually lived above at Lyons House. That was his yeah. name, but afterwards, uh, Tony Ryan. Tony Ryan, yeah. Yeah, Lyons House up near uh, near, near Hazel Hatch in Dublin. Yeah, and you can see it when you're on the train, either going or coming from Dublin. You can see Lyons House over in the distance because it's a huge house. But that's that where Lord Concurry lived, wasn't it? Lord Concurry lived, yeah, Lawless. Yeah. family name was Lawless. Lawless yeah. And he just bought the estate outside in uh, Netherlands Star, Barrington Land mainly. Yeah. And uh, he was an absentee. He didn't really, he didn't care about who was on it and who was off it. And he just wanted the estate kind of cleared. Uh, but back to him, he covers that very well in the book. Yeah. You know, which, I mean, we should say really, I suppose, Mark, Mark was a monk in Glenstar. That's right. And uh, oh, great historian he was married. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the things he published. He wrote a lovely history actually of Glen Stahl as well. It is. Small absolutely. little slim book. Yeah. And uh, yeah. he was a, a very intelligent man and uh, very helpful with information. Yeah. He wrote, he wrote for the Olympic Journal as well. He, he, did, he did, he did, yeah. A few articles for the Barrington's edition now, because uh, yeah. of the Barrington connection. And he did, uh, he did that on the color. No, he, he did a lot of. He told me. He told me one time that he was. He almost wanted. He almost wanted to see the House of Lords. Yeah. Went, so I forget who brought him to the House of Lords mm. for for lunch, as they call it, lunch to meet yeah. to meet dinner. But brought him for his lunch to the House of Lords, and uh, I can't think now who he said brought mm. him in. And mm. he said, uh, "There's a good man here, and I want you to introduce you to." And he said, "It was the Marquis of Lansdowne, the old, yeah. the last man that, that died." Before there's a present Marcus there now, but his father. And uh, he said, Hello, he said, This man is over from, from Ireland. And he looked now, whether he had an idea or not, I don't know. But he said mm -hmm. anyway to Mark, there's only two types of people in this this life I, I don't like. Mm -hmm. They are Irish people and priests. Yeah. 
<laughs> Mark said, I couldn't answer that. Yeah. I couldn't answer, I couldn't say yeah. anything to him. No. He got two for the price of one. He did. He <laughs> said, because I'd have been talked out, you know. Yeah, yeah. He just said, you know, yeah. lovely to meet you. And of course, your man wasn't one bit interested. But yeah. he said, it was lovely to meet. Lovely, like, nice to meet the, the, the Marcus of Lansdowne. Yeah, yeah. 93,000 acres he had at one stage in, uh, mm -hmm. in Kerry. Yeah. But, but of course, most of his land, most of the Kerry land, a lot of it now was mountainy and yeah, yeah. couldn't be used either. Although I think the house is still there at a, a place called Doreen in, uh, yeah. down in Kerry, yeah. at the, the yeah. house that he owned, hmm. that he lived in, you know. It was a great book on the lands on the stage. Oh, it's yeah. a fabulous book. Yeah. Where, uh, Jerry, Jerry, Lyne. Jerry, Jerry Lyne. Jerry Lyne, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's he, died, he died actually. The, yeah, it's a very book. Saw, this, it's all dead artists we're talking about today. <laughs> what people, happens, isn't it? He's yeah. dead, he's dead, you know. But that's another marvellous book on the Lansdowne estate. Yeah. Because the Lansdowne, he did a lot of land in Limerick. Yeah. And uh, I often said this before, there's so many things called after him in Limerick. We have hmm. Lansdowne Park, yeah. and we have, um, um, we have uh, Shelburne, which was yeah. his son, Shelburne Road. Mm -hmm. You have his other title, which was Tan Morris. You have a Tan Morris Avenue yeah, in Limerick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You even lens down bridge outside near the two mile lane. There's a little bridge you wouldn't notice there, yeah, yeah. which is the end of his estate. Because mm -hmm. he owned roughly from giving up. I remember Frank Pendergast asking me this a few years ago. He was doing something and uh, he asked me what where, where was his estate. And uh, the best given point is the end of Sarsfield Bridge at what used to be Jewish Hotel, the Strand Hotel. Yeah. and walk up the bank of the river all the way as far as Kuna, where that river flows into the Shannon, right up along up into Capanti, and take a right and back in along again into uh, what we know in by Tuman Park there. Yeah. And back again, back then, back to right around by Farnshawn was all his estates, mm -hmm. the Clancy Strand, and back again to to uh, Jules That's Hotel. Yeah. That was all the Lansdowne estate. But in Dublin, he had another big estate, which yeah. he called it the big townhouse after his son, which became the Shelburne Hotel. Yeah. You know, and then he had Lansdowne Road and yeah. there's so many things called after him in Dublin as well mm -hmm. that you kind of forget about. You know, people often wonder why things are called what they are. You wonder what happened to his wealth, you know, I mean, even the ground rents. Oh, they still well, they still have it. There's a current there's a big house in um in Bowood in Wiltshire. Mm -hmm. And I think the present guy is living here, uh, the present uh, Marquis is living, I think he lives in Scotland, I think. I think he yeah. gave up living at Bowood. But Bowood is actually open to the public. And oh, all yeah. the, the records are there. All yeah. the family stuff. Uh, a mutual friend of ours went there a few years ago. Went to see Bowood, I remember him telling me. And uh, just, just to see the house. I don't think some of it has been knocked away, but at least he's there. But he's a huge, God, the wealth they must have had. But he was a very important man in England. Lansdowne yeah. was. I think he became... Secretary to something, some one of these, what do we call them here, under secretaries or something, yeah, to yeah, Victoria, yeah. I think, or something. Yeah. He was, but uh, but they, he lived mainly in England. They were absentee landlords. Yeah. They, that's how your man trench took over the, the estate yeah. down below in Kerry anyway. Mm. But uh, mm. but it's a massive estate. But like that, getting back to books, John O'Connor's book we were talking about last week on mongers. Yeah. That was a lovely book, yeah. the history yeah. of mongers. Yeah. Yeah. John Sheehan's book. Uh, well, a lot of those books like took years, there were years in the making. Like, I know John had his book most handwritten, like the, book, the history, and um, had all his notes and everything, and just a matter of getting it. And the reason he, he actually, to, to get the finance of it, and uh, I remember, I remember um, Paddy Dunhope said yeah. to me about getting him to do it, like, you know, about raising finance. And luckily, uh, the printers in Chattagol, Shopkin Simons, they said to him, if you we'll print the book and we'll wait until you sell it, pay for it, which was a fair, mm. you know, and because John couldn't afford to raise the money, you know, and so I mean Nesson Dunahu, Paddy Dunahu and John kind of got together and they uh, organized the launch with everything. And luckily, I mean it sold very well and I think he had to do another print short print of it. Um and which is, um, it's, it's, you can't get it now again, like all, you know, sometimes there can be a slow burn, some of these histories, you know, you might sell, if you print 500, you might sell 300, and the other 200 left, but the law will sell, like, you know, the law is somebody new coming to the parish looking for a copy, and um, if you, you know, so, I mean, 
John, I mean, uh, Mahdi's around looking for more and more all the time because if it's a good history, people, and you see what John was like, Raheen and, and Mungret, like they're, they're practically suburbs of Limerick now. So you had a huge catchment area for people that'd be interested. Like, so out of, out of population that you're going to get people who are interested, um, you know, and now a lot of people, I know in John Sheehan's book, a lot of people bought the book and I'd say the spine isn't bent on it, but they bought it out of loyalty, you know, they, to, to have it. But um, another great book, like, and John did that as a retirement pro project, you know, and he put a lot of work into it, went, to, went into libraries and uh, went to Dublin and went to. It's you know, history now, it's history of Clarina. The corner of Limerick, Belly, yeah. history of Belly Brown Clarina. Belly Brown Clarina, yeah. yeah. And, and Patrick's World, well, yeah. Uh, a corner of Limerick is called, and yeah. uh, very, very well, you know. And I don't, I've often forget, forgotten what things I'd find something in the newspaper, and I'd go back in and see. And John would have it covered in his book, like you know, it was. He, I, I'd, I'd have forgotten that it was actually in the book. So he had John went through the newspapers and picked out items. And, um, he had he covers the two landlords, you know, which we spoke about, Lord Clarina and Lord Emily. And, Coopers, Coopers as well. Coopers, yeah, 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 yeah Coopers. And um, the Coopers are kind of a forgotten family, actually. Yeah, really, because the, the, the relations, I was looking at the programme last week on television, and uh, Sandy Kelly, it's about Johnny Cash coming to Ireland. Oh, yeah. And the uh, San, singer Sandy Kelly was in it, and it showed her with Johnny Cash in Marquis Castle outside Sligo, mm. which is a Cooper castle. Yeah. And they were relatives of these Coopers. They were cool, but they're far out a bit now, you know, but there were still yeah. relatives. Of, I thought when I saw the pictures of the castle, because that's fairly intact, about just Cooper, outside Sligo. There's a Cooper's Hill house in Sligo as well, O'Hara's. Oh, O'Hara's, yeah. They, yeah. Changed, they changed their name when they, got, when they married in there. Oh, yeah, that, that, Cooper, that happened a fair bit. River, you, wouldn't, river. You, wouldn't, you wouldn't mind changing your name once there's a lot of money coming with oh, you. Oh, yeah. You know? I changed, I changed it the money. <laughs> I think it's in Riverstown, Copers Hill House in Riverstown, in Sligo. Yeah. The, now the Copers, they, they were kind of a middle class gentry, you know. As such, they were, they weren't, they wouldn't be in the same league as Lord Clarina and. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But they, they were beside. The, the house was right beside Terbo House, you know. So uh, pity. They, they actually, the, the cement factory used to have um, a herd of cattle, prize kind of a prize herd of cattle. Yeah. And they called them the, the, I think they were known as the Cooper Hill Herd. Yeah. Or something. They'd win the shows and, and that, you know. And they the were looked after. And the, the, the individual uh, cattle were known as like Cooper Hill Maid and Cooper Hill, you know, they, they got yeah. names and they used the Cooper Hill name, yeah. Um, so it's one it's way. It's a pity the house is gone. You know, oh, there's, yes, there's nothing of it left, you know. There is a picture of it in uh, Ben Stone's book, All Right Now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The House of Ireland. There's a picture of it in that. But like that, but was his name's history as well? When we forgot about um, um, Tom Colhan's one back in uh, in yeah. Shannon's. Bandy Shannon's. That's a beautiful Shannes. history as well. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. and uh, I mean, very well. That was launched back in uh, in in, in Ahnish. Ahnish, If you yeah. look at me, Ahnish, getting sponsorship from Ahnish. Yeah. yeah. Well, that. Thanks, thanks to Liam, Liam Dunder was very important. Yeah. 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 I mean, Tom, Tom is a very quiet man. It wouldn't be um, push himself, but he had the history written and Liam. Yeah, you know, we all know Liam. Another man has passed, has died. Mm -hmm. uh, Liam Dundon. And um, actually, I found a, a card he sent me there recently, and to Australia, isn't it? Yeah. But um, uh, Liam was a character, like, but he, he organised the launch in Ahnish because he was the park ranger there, and uh, he, uh, he he got Tom's book published, and a, fa a fantastic book, you know. Very good book. But, yeah. 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 Lovely pictures in that as well, and, and uh, it's, it covers yeah. a fair area from Shannon, Shannon Gold, and yeah. all that area. Robertstown, Shannon Gold, Robertstown, and, uh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you'd yeah. forget about Robertstown, which is yeah. the church, because people passing out that church on the way to finds. Yeah. When the church is there on the right hand side of the road. That's the main. That's the main church because finds was only in, uh, an afterthought. Like finds was later on. Robertstown yeah, was yeah. the original parish. And, so the uh, railway really, when the railway then determines so the railway fines and yeah. the sea planes and all that brought in yeah. a yeah. church in fines. Yeah. And uh, that's after 1858, the railway arrived right, to fines. So it's after that, fines really developed. Well, it was a port before that. Uh, but 
since really in the, in the late 19th century, the coins developed. And I think I said before, I remember somebody in coins telling me, I think uh, he's, dead, he's dead as well, uh, that when they were digging the, when they were putting down the ESB poles back in the 1930s, 1940s, they were digging up uh, sh shells inside the main village because it was on reclaimed land and it was, it was only slab land, you know, uh, where the village is now. But Robertson Church, the last time I was in Robertson Church was for was it Tom Clancy or Liam Dunn's room. Liam Dunn was the last one I was there. I, just feel yeah. I couldn't even get name? in. It was packed. Yeah. I couldn't and get in the door. That's right. And there was no, there was no windows yeah. in, in, uh, on the shore side because of the, the wind off the shore. The wind coming up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when Liam took us there and out a few years ago. We started there. That's right. And then uh, went around that general area. And Tom, actually, there, Tom, Tom Clancy was on that one as well. It was, it was, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah, but uh, Aline was very good. He was funny. He, he was, yeah. used to give out to me for having a towny accent. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's yeah. just yeah. only a towny able to an accent, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. It was funny. Yeah, he, gave, he gave out to all of us, like, you know. But, uh, he's two years dead now. You wouldn't think it's like. No. no, no yeah, you yeah. wouldn't think it's like. He's two years dead this year now. He, he, dodged, the he dodged the COVID. <laughs> he, yeah, did. Yeah. he did. But, there's so, but going back again to local histories, there's so many. There's a I lovely one as well that people, a lot of people forget about. Mm. And it's a pity it was never expanded properly. Um, a History of Patrick's Well and Cricola yeah. yeah. by Gerald, uh, Gerald uh, Biggin. Be Biggin, Biggin, yeah. Biggin. Biggin, yeah. Yeah. I think his father was a guard in, yeah, in, uh, in Patrick's Well. Yeah. And he wrote a lovely history, but it was badly kind of uh, printed and, you know, put together. Yeah. It's a pity yeah. because there's great information in it. There is, yeah. yeah. You know, for that then, he, he brought that out for the, the centenary of the, the Church of Ireland in Kilpeacon in oh, 1990. Yeah. That's what that yeah. was launched in conjunction with that, I remember. There's a, there's a history of Kilpeacon Church brought out as well. Uh, oh, there the was. Yellow, I forgot about that. I have that. The yellow one, yeah. Yeah, yeah the yellow one, yeah, the big farmers. Yeah. I don't know whatever happened to that chap who wrote that. I can't think of his name now. Yeah. That, and that was borrowed as well for an anniversary. Oh, yeah. I can't think now what that was borrowed for. But and then, of course, you're Frank Whelan's Kappa. Kappa, that's yeah. a lovely yeah. history. I, I mean, like, and it wasn't even from the place. That's right. I was going to say, non native. Uh, and and Martin O'Carbu, another non native, who wrote The History of Henry, which is a lovely, it's a lovely book. book. Yeah. 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 That, I remember that cost, uh, that was costing one pound. Plus 10, t, 10 p tax. Yeah. I remember yeah. a pound and ten pence that was reported. Yeah, but that yeah. was reprinted by a group outside in Paris Kenry. It was, yeah. They reprinted yeah. it again. And uh, yeah. but Martin O'Carby's book was, was an excellent book. Because but again, the, it covered the, the, the pity about reprinting books is that you should, that they should add new information in, you know, rather than just printing the same book again. You know, like you have to have new information after that length of time. Yeah. Or you know, but um, but at least it was it was done. And the other the other book that I like is Joe Carroll's book on Castle Connell. Joe and Tom are um, Patui. Tom, Tui, Tui, yeah. Patui, yeah. Patui, Patui, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On Castle Connell. Yeah. It's a lovely yeah. book. And uh, because uh, I mean, Joe, George, you know, I remember Joe got George dead a while now. His yeah, and exactly. uh, Patui still held it hearty, but yeah. he was anyway last September. I know anyway, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because uh, you miss these people now. There'll be no you lectures done. You don't. You, you see, you meet. I'd meet Pat too here outside in uh, in Herberts. Herberts, yeah. If there was Castle Talent Society, we're having the town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a pity that we're missing out on these over that. Yeah. Meeting people and that. But yeah. that history of Castle Talent is a lovely book. Yes, and yes. there was also one done by the ICA in Castle Talent. Yeah. Which I have as well. A group yes, of women yes. got together before yeah. that book came out of Joe Carroll, and they yeah. tried to put as much as they could together. And, and so it was very handy. It was in, a, a nice book done in Castle Troy as well, though, by a teacher. Is he Healy or uh, a book in Castle, History of uh, Castle Troy? Yeah, that's what? a lovely. Uh, no, it isn't. Uh, it isn't. Uh, it's in Kerry. It's in Kerry. Yeah, it's in Kerry. Yeah, he was teaching, I think, in uh, yeah. in Castle Troy, the school yeah. outside. Yeah. In, uh, and he wrote. So he did that book now in the sense of a, of a walking tour. That's right. Which is and effective. he started yeah. off at a given point, and then he'd walk as far as something, and then. He'd walk again to another point, but it's yeah. a Gerald Healy, I think you see. Gerald Healy, yeah, yeah. Gerald Healy, and uh, but that's a lovely book, and uh, I never met him, and uh, yeah. I presume yeah. he's gone from the area now because I never yeah. heard of him anymore. 
Yeah. But he, he did it uh, uh, on Castle. But there was a little book before that written by Dolly Stewart, That's a small right. little book on Mona yeah. Lean, yeah. just around Mona Lean itself. Mm-hmm. Now, he credited his heart in the book, all right, though. He'd read that and he yeah. expanded that with his one. And he goes yeah. into the explaining of uh, Castle Troy and the castle at Castle Troy, which most people think it's the one in the main road, That's which is no castle. Yeah. yeah. Whereas the, the real castle Troy is down in the banks of the river. Yeah. Only day. If you walk down by the university, yeah, it looks like it's out in the middle of the river, really. It does, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and we were, uh, we were down there for a tour one day. Oh, we were, we were there not, not in another night. Yeah, and uh, yeah. but it's a very unusual uh, castle that is. Yeah, down in the bank, yeah. where the, roughly where the Mulcair comes into the Shannon. Yeah, is where it is because obviously it was built at that point. The garden yeah. does the pools have been built by the McCures, who were a kind of um. A South Clare um, uh, clan was yeah. uh, supposed to build that castle mm-hmm. uh, at Castle Sorry, at the end of their land. But they did that lots of times. It's like, what's his name? Uh, Donald Moore O'Brien was the cute boy. He was able to put monasteries at the yeah. end of his land. He did up with Corkham Row above the bottom to stop the, the old Aucklands and the Flatties moving in. He did the same with Holy Cross. And he yeah. put these monasteries on. And points Dis- that disputed, disputed, disputed land, right. yeah, yeah. Really cute move to make, yeah, yeah, you know, to, to stop the other crowd kind of moving in. You might, you might attack me, but you won't attack the monks. You yeah. won't, no, yeah. no, yeah. they, 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 they got the hell like if they attack them, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, but yeah. usually put into places. But that, but that, um, that, that some of the lovely, lovely histories now that are out there. That castle, the new castle, like, uh, it was there where the uh, nurse was killed, uh, by a fellow called Manning, he was the last man to hang in Ireland, yeah. Yeah. There was a great documentary done on You were on it, actually. Yeah, I was, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. I, 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 then then I, the, the, Tom Toomey did the other one. Mm-hmm. The one that I was in, uh, I was in, I can't give it now, out near, 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 can't give it the yeah. place. Oh, yeah, yeah. Then, There's a school there now as well. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. but um, there, there were cases, there was a series of murders, yeah. murders in Ireland. Yeah. It covered in our tea series, but like that, this but, uh, bit... so you can Tom Toby did, of course. We have the um, him, himself and, and Harry. Oh, did I nearly forgot about that one, yeah. yeah. Donna Moore, another good history, Roxburgh, Donna Moore, and Ben Lady, yeah. And uh, actually, that's up on, on the internet now. Mike McGuire has put it up on the internet because it can't be got. Uh, because I know Tom it covers a big area, it does because that comes in. I remember Tom Toby telling me. The area of the parish comes in as far as the top of Mulgrave Street into a yeah. point of the road there, which is Out hard to believe. And all the Mulgrave. Yeah, and it's funny like the way some parishes where yeah. they go. It's like if you go out to if you go to Barrington's Bridge, yeah. especially on the old the old well, not the old road, the old uh, metal bridge there. Well, there's a new bridge there now. Yeah. And if you're coming from Limerick to your left hand side in the river that flows under that there about about 200 yards up the river there, there's a point where three dioceses meet. Yeah. Which is hard to believe, because when you go over that bridge, you got into the diocese of Cashel and Emily, yeah, yeah. which is where Maru is. Yeah. And then you have the diocese of Killaloo and the diocese of Limerick. Yeah. You forget that, that because yeah. Castle Connell is in the diocese of Killaloo, That's which right. is, it's, it's, people don't realise that, you know. The, and and, six uh, and, and Cratlow's in the diocese of Limerick. Yeah, it's really hard to believe, you know, the, yeah, the, yeah. the confusion between the diocese and between the counties. The county boundaries with, with diocesan boundaries are not the same. You know, county boundaries aren't the same as diocesan boundaries. Like, yeah, know. that's that's true. Well, it's Six Mile Bridge actually is divided in two. That's Half right. Six Mile Bridge is in Limerick. Yeah. And the other, that's yeah. how there's two churches out there. People often wonder why there's, there's two yeah. churches in uh, in Six Mile Six Bridge. Bridge yeah. One half the diocese is in, the other half the village is in Limerick, and the other half is in Killaloo. Killaloo. And Killaloo is a very long diocese. It takes yeah. in Bar, right up along to Bar. Yeah. And then it goes westwards, right down to Loophead. But mm-hmm. funnily enough, places like Lehinstein and yeah. the Dice of Galway. That's right. You know, when you go yeah. when you go up to North up there, you don't realize that. that in Galway. I, I know it's not Limerick, but the, the fantastic history is the, the three part history of the Dice of Killaloo uh, by Father um, Ignatius. Uh, Ignatius, Ignatius, I can't his name. This Murphy. Murphy, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Iggy, but, he's buried actually in Kilkee. His, his grave is right beside the church in Kilkee. Yeah. I know where he's buried. Yeah. And uh, oh, that's, a, that's marvelous that three the, the diocese of he's Kilkee. A very, he's a very generous man with his information as well. And uh, But uh, one thing I liked about him is for a priest, 
he didn't hold back. And this, like, this was pre kind of, you know, liberal church type. Yeah. He, he wrote about the scandals in the church, you know, about priests having mistresses yeah. and being brought up in court and all that, you know, and he didn't, he didn't hold back from that, like, you know. Um, so it's because there was, um, there, was a, there was a scandal in Glen with the Knight of Glen's mistress and the priest uh, shunning her and, and the whole um, excommunication. And in the court case, it mentioned uh, Kenny and Stenson in Clare, which was a similar case where a priest was having an affair with a woman and it, was, it came up in court as well. And it was quoted in the Glen case. And when I went into Ignatius Murphy, he had covered it. So I was surprised that being a priest that he might have ignored yeah, yeah, yeah. it. But he gave what's yeah, yeah, yeah. and all like, it's a fantastic, yeah. you know, I mean, if, to compare, it's even better than Beg Begley's history of Limerick. You know, I suppose when we're talking about history, we have to explain to people, explain to the listeners out there, Tony, you know, that, um, that, uh, that, that there's different histories of Limerick going back to no, the Ferrer's Fer history uh, yeah. in the 18th century. And then you have Fitzgerald and McGregor in 1827, and then you have Lenehan's mm. history, 1867, and then you have Begley's three-part history, Canon Begley's three-part history. They're the main ones, like, you know. But you're uh, not fine, Tom. The only thing is, which I'm sure I do, I'm sure you would have, you look for something, you forget to read, and you're looking for something that's to do with a particular land art, yeah. who won't be mentioned in the diocese. Yeah. And then, likewise, you might want to find out about some priest. Yeah. And you look in a local history and you forget it has nothing got to do with, with religion, that it's strictly history, kind of, more or less. Well, if you go back to, go back to um, the history of Moreau, you went to, you, you wonder why didn't he, why didn't he reference Ken and Begley? Begley wouldn't yeah, be dealing yeah, with Moreau. Yeah. You know, uh, our, our assembly, like in, 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 uh, in Ignatius Murphy's book, yeah. say, why, why didn't he mention Crackler or Six Mile Bridge or something that happened there? And you know, so and that's why local no, history is an important thing, yeah. you know. And uh, you know, like it, it's important. And like a lot of them are written by non-academics, and I think they're written to people who, you know, that were written in the way that people will understand. You know, there's no philosophizing in it. And I think, you know, that that, that, that brings me to think of the the, the, the oration that I got out of two he gave it, Jim Jim Kelly Shore, yeah. which you reprinted in the in the order which other. Yeah. Yeah. that he said, which I thought was fascinating. He mm. said, it's uh, gone are the days when people go to the academics for history. Yeah. They go to the local man. The local man that has no, no, um, what you say, no doctors or no thesis. Yeah. Yeah. He's the man with the local history. Yeah. And we got out of two weeks of that, I remember well. Mm. You know, it was, which is true. Uh, he was referring, yeah. like, of course, Jim Kemi as well, and to Kevin Hannon. Well, if you're talking to Kevin Hannon, Jim Kemi, uh, James Canada, you know, all those great historians, like, I mean, like, I know we're both involved in the Oliver Journal and like he's uh, blown our own trumpet, but without Jim Kimmy, look at all the history he has saved, you know, with the Oliver Journal down through the years. People have wrote stories about the park, you know, park men and different, you know, Shani's pub, things like, uh, if they weren't done then, they'd never, they'd never be done, like, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I suppose, Kevin, we'll go back, Kevin Hannon wrote his, his uh, put all his stuff together in a book as well before he dies, you know. Uh, and if that's been reprinted, I think it'd be good to reference it and index it as well, like, you know. Uh, and I, like, I love, and, you know, one of the good things about Lenin's history are, are the footnotes, you know, and there's another great history I look at, is the history of Listowel by Father Gahan. And the footnotes are often more interesting than the actual text, you know. The, the, like, he'll give a, a fact in the, in the chapter, and then you, you said footnote 29, and you went on, and it's a big long, yeah, Lenin, yeah. Lenin know, is the same. The yeah, footnotes, yeah. I love reading Lenin's footnotes, I have so many written up by heart at this stage. Sure some, of them are, some of them are longer than the actual the page, the shorter than the footnotes, you know, in Lenin, yeah. Only, only last night I was reading in Lenin's history now, yeah. in a footnote, funny enough. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, there's a Nicholas after uh, one of the Arthur's family. He was married to a daughter of John Skiddy, Senator of Cork. And he's the he's Skiddy now that there was well, a fire well, there yesterday. Which Nicholas Arthur was he? He was in the Federal Reserve was in trouble in 1798. No, no, no older no. one. I'm going back to 14 something. This was all now. right. Okay. And okay. he was and he was a, but I was just saying yesterday on the, on, the, on the television there was a fire in Cork down in Arnhem Charles 
grain stores in Ring and Skiddy. Yeah. And I was thinking that they're the same skiddies as uh, yeah. as the, the skiddy that he was referring to. So yeah. they were in Cork in the 1400s. Yeah. This John Skiddy, senator of Cork. Yeah. And uh, it just mentions him as being married to one of the... He left the money. His daughter, he left his daughter, she was the only heir, I think, of this John Skiddy, who married Nicholas Arthur and brought a big fortune into the Arthur family, mm. 14 something. That Len Henderson is a footnote. But the footnote, yeah. of course, covers half a page. I remember yeah. trying to read it. And tiny little print. You definitely yeah. went to make the point that's up, you know. And uh, actually, I never thought that Skiddy, Ring of Skiddy was named after the family. Well, it is. Yeah. There's a documentary was often shown on a, on a channel that is good with the show things on it. It's a Cork channel. Yeah. Uh, and they, they showed what were known as the Skiddy Houses in Cork. Mm. The arms houses set yeah. up by the Skiddy family. And they were restored a few years ago. Somewhere in Cork, I don't know where in Cork they are. They're in the centre of Cork somewhere anyway. And I often threatened to go down to find these houses. But yeah. they were set up by the Skiddy family. It's amazing, you know, that like people forget that in the in the 18th and 19th century, unless you had a benevolent family in the locality, a lot of the poor people starve or, oh, yeah, know, yeah. Like, yeah, like Hennie, Hennie Villiers and, you know, which yeah. I've really forgotten about. You know, it and, did put money. I was only reading again about a friend I mentioned there two weeks ago to you, this uh, Vera Salmons. Yeah. I was reading about her now today mm. and the money she put up. She, do you know what she tried to buy? She tried to buy the Wailing Wall yeah. in, in Jerusalem. Yeah. She put up £100,000 and the Muslims refused it. Sure. They wouldn't take it. They, owned, they actually yeah. owned the wall. And she put up £100,000 in 19, I think it was 1932, some year like that anyway. Some money, 100,000. So it's before the Second World War. Yeah, and they, they, they wouldn't take the money from us. She offered for 60,000, hmm. and then it went to 100,000. But luckily enough, her money then was used, the money was, it wasn't accepted at the time, and they had houses built up, and t up against it. And uh, they, 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 they said in the thing that they brought their cattle through gaps in the wall. They harvested. Yeah. But eventually the Israelis were able to buy the Wailing Wall. But her money was used for this museum that they have now in Jerusalem uh, that she funded, a huge museum of, uh, of Ar Arabic art. And that yeah. is there now to this day. But that wasn't opened, I think, five years after her death. She yeah. died in 60, 69. 69. Yeah. But I was fascinated to read that she tried to buy the Wailing Wall. It's a bit like so, your man coming to Ireland trying to buy the North. Um, it is. Uh, yeah. the, the fella yeah. out in the stand. Yeah, Baron yeah. Hanley. Baron Hanley, yeah. Baron yeah. Hanley, yeah. yeah. He said, yeah. Again, I, I remember his car going up O'Connor Connell Avenue and it was painted green, white and orange. Hmm. As you were told, going to schools, green, white and gold. Yeah. But I remember, he, uh, so all I remember, he used to, he used to have a, a fistful of, um, of pennies. Yeah. And when you get a group, you throw them all up into the air. You know, I remember yeah. John Carson, we're talking about him one night now on, on the radio with John Carson about the Baron. The Baron, Baron Handy was well known because yeah. he came from Strand. It's only about, is it about five miles from Newcastle thought, West? Yeah, yeah. But like he, that, as you said, he, he went was, to he, right back. There was a brilliant documentary done on him. In, there was, on, yeah, it's on, on, yeah. On the, yeah, on the, it was on the radio they did as well. No, on television, they, oh, they, yeah. they showed them. Yeah. Um, they showed well, there's caricatures of him, like you know, yeah, but he, yeah. but, no, he, and, he, uh, he died in like he was a pauper when he died, he got money, you know, yeah, yeah. But he, um, he was put up this money anyway to buy back the six counties, yeah, and and then, to what, take. He, what he has or not, I my, my, <laughs> my, uh, my uncle worked in the bank in Mayo, and he, he said, I go back into the 40s, and he remembers that the band Hanley, he's this, he never heard of the bank, even though he's from Limerick. He was sent out because he was from Glynn and he was sent out to, to meet the Baron Hanley when he came in. The cat, yeah. Like he said, this big car pulled up, like you say, all colours and flags. And because he was the low, he was from Limerick, they said, you go out, meet him now, you know. And he said, uh, he was, he, I want, he was breaking it like, he went out to, to meet this one. Right? And he said, he came in. But he said, it's like something out of Hollywood. He walked in like an, an entourage out to me, yeah. the chair and the clap and everything, like, you know. And he transact he did his business, you know. But, but my uncle was, was laughing at the point that, you know, you're from Limerick, you're you're, you're nominated to meet him next like, you know, yeah. you, you can tell him where you're from. Yeah. Even though he said 
he probably never heard of gin, you know, from beautiful yeah. Spanish. Yeah. Probably, so. But I remember we got up for Connell Avenue. God, when I was very young, and my brother sent to me, there's the Baden Hansley. Eh? Yeah. And then there was a builder in Limerick afterwards, Sean Hanley, and he was, they kind of gave yeah. him the name then as well. It's yeah. like Al Muffies or Spud Muffies. Yeah. You know, they gave him the title, the Baden Hanley. I think there was a fellow in the first world war called Gunnar Brady, and any Bradys, and then we had a fellow, there was a fellow called, he's David Arson, and they were the Gunners, they called him Gunnar Brady. And anyone, I remember in the 70s and 80s, anybody called Brady, Got the name Gunner, you know. Gunner Brady, yeah. 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 But getting back to, to, there's one or two places, Tom, that unfortunately were never properly covered. Well, I think Abbey Field is, is, is the biggest area I can think of. And Newcastle West. You yeah. know, two big, two big centres of the population. Now, Manix Joyce did Kilmarock. Manix Joyce has done loads of history. Um, yeah. Manix did, he did Burry, then he did uh, Cork and Mahide later. He did Burry. One of his first ones, which was nicely history. And then he did a very good history of Kilmallock, you know. Um, and Manix was a phenomenal uh, writer, like, you know. Um, the Hyde book is very good. Yeah. Again, it covers a big area. Yeah. Cockham yeah. Hyde is going from yeah. one side of the main road, like of the, the Cock Road to the other side. Yeah. Uh, and a, a great book would be a collection of all his writings in the Limerick Leader, which kind of explanatory yeah. notes, you know. Like, I have a fair yeah. share of them. Yeah. Yeah. And if you say put, I was just thinking if you put the, the the article on one page and have the kind of explanation background to it on the on the on the other side, like you know, have the facing page with the article, and then have something like you know they do with Ulysses, you have the actual text and the, the explanation. But um, that's 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 the same as the as the article now in the book called the Not Monster Studies yeah. by Bertie Cousin, John's father. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Who did that that famous thing on um, on Caleb Powell? Yeah. Where the notes are written and then he explains then afterwards what it was yeah. about yeah. on each particular. I think there's uh are there 15 or 18 people mentioned in that article. Yeah. But there were two families. Bertie Cousin over been been well known and, and been a solicitor at the time. Mm -hmm. He yeah. wasn't taking any chances. Yeah. He wrote to the families that oh, there's some scandalous things said about, about oh, yeah. families. Yeah. But he, he wrote to them to know, was it okay? Some of them he couldn't contact. But there were two families in particular who said no. They didn't want the notes written. I know one of the families who are gone now, and I can't think of the other one now. John, John, John Cousin told me one of the families, but they didn't want written what he had said about them. Yeah. He, he did, some families now, he did kind of prayers. Yeah. But I should tell people it's a... It's an article uh, on the choosing a grand jury, which really yeah. we like chosen the county council now. Yeah, we were allowed to do that. Up and to yeah. up to eighteen ninety eight, the grand juries ran the, ran the county. Then the county council took over. Yeah. Uh, see, some people think the county council came in with the change from uh, British to Irish, but yeah. they were yeah. they were brought in before independence. And forget that, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. But these, then, but these things, the notes are very interesting to read. What he said. I think he explains where he got. He, he was in a bookshop and he found them. He found it. Yeah, he found yeah. it. Thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's John John Cousin's father now. I think he it found Paddy, the booklet. Was it Paddy Lyson's bookshop? Or, I can't remember where it was. Yeah, that's too to know when he yeah, came yeah. across this little thing. Who was that, oh, John? But it's a very interesting article if you want to know about families. Yeah, and yeah. Came from. I mean, yeah. he said he said as um a, a, a lot of people would know of would heard of, of Crockers. At Ballinagard, a big house outside Balneasy. He said that Edward Crocker brought up, uh, I think, for six sons, six sons of blockheads he brought yeah. up, who, yeah. <laughs> who put, put the estate into ruins, you know. Yeah. And he said that another particular family uh, he, that he couldn't marry off his daughter Lucy, and he'd put in brackets, she was very ugly. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they couldn't yeah. marry her off. Yeah, yeah. Even, even with the for, even with the fortune. Yeah. 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 Some of the, they're hilarious he to said, read. He said so, someone else had the softest part of him was his leg, was it? His iron leg. Oh, that was uh, that was uh, that's his, well, that was said about two different families. Yeah. That was said about Bruce in Castle yeah. That's right. But I think it doesn't him at all. It was uh, the fellow from Boss Kelly, Carrick and Lish, uh, friend, Benjamin yeah. Friend. He did have an iron leg. 
and they, they said to the South, the South <laughs> part, <laughs> you know, but, yeah. but some of them were desperate to, but uh, I don't, that, that's a book now that's threatening a long time, History, Carrick and Lish. Yeah. And we yeah. know the men that's supposed to be doing it, and well, he went to the other and do it, yeah. you know, there's, yeah. This, because in case yeah, I mean, yeah, he has all the information, you know, and yeah, it's a pity because you know it it'd be, it'd be great book. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I remember when Sean Spellacy was doing the Richland. Yeah. Which, uh, again, it's another book now that there were five thousand copies of that printed. Yeah. And they sold, I think, it was around three thousand, three and a half thousand, and they were left with two thousand, whatever it was, two thousand, fifteen hundred or two thousand, and now it is gone. You can't yeah. get. It. No, you know, it's amazing you know. the way books. Yeah, yeah. And, and they only got 250 hardbacks. Yeah. And they'd have sold they'd have sold a thousand <laughs> nearly yeah, yeah. hardbacks that they'd gotten a mill. Yeah. But they were gone, they flashed the hardbacks. Right? The hardbacks are pre pre ordered. You yeah. To, if you, they were gone. Like they, they were gone, yeah, early, yeah. Very early on. And, and it's kind of a book you needed in hardback, really, because it is, if, yeah. If, it you're, is. if you're if you're if you're putting it away in the shelf, the soft back can do it. But if you're using it, like if you a book you're using a lot, a hardback, you have to have it in hardback, really. You do. Yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember um I remember when, when Spellacy doing that book about 1970, 77, 78. It came out in, in uh, it came out in 89. Yeah. But I traveled a fair bit of the county with Spellacy. Yeah. Uh, when he doing that. And I remember one time, just talking of history is not finished. We went out to Broadford, and at the time, um the Brown shop, Vincent Brown, his father had a shop mm. in uh, in Broadford, a uh, sweet shop come news yeah. agents. And uh, Spellacy said, I'll go in and find out if he has any information about the village. Yeah. And uh, he went in there to the shop and he came out, he came out with two ice creams in his hand. Yeah. He says to me, I said, well, how'd you get on? He said, nah, he ran him. He told him he'd known, he wouldn't give him any information and that he had it all. He was doing his own book on Broadfoot. Mm -hmm. Now, two things to that. One was I said to him, you're a big idiot. I said to Bar two ice creams after him. You should yeah. have left him, Tim. That was yeah. the first thing when he came yeah. out. But the second thing was, the man died afterwards. Yeah. And Vincent, I asked Vincent about that. Mm. And he said he took all his stuff with him to Dublin. Yeah. But now the book still hasn't been done. Mm. And what had his father collected about yeah. Bradford, we'll, we'll never know. And Which that's is, uh, if Vincent, Has Vincent still got the stuff? And he told me he took everything away. Yeah. Because I did ask him about, I said, what happened to all your father's notes that he had on Broadford? Oh, I took them, he said, with me. Yeah. Now, whether he has discarded them or not, because he sold his house afterwards then. That's right, and yeah. He moved in yeah. Dublin. So whether... I doubt if he's, like, he didn't have enough interest. But like said, Seamus and Sullivan now did a great book on the family. Yeah. And if, oh, if, he, yeah. if even if he gave the material to Seamus to do it, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's a pity. Yeah. You know, that um, because like that stuff gets lost and nobody seems to know yeah, yeah, what became yeah. of it. You ask people out, was that the case? I forget the, the history of hospital by Michael Which, Sullivan. Yeah. Lovely, lovely. Very good. Um, yeah. And yeah. so many about the knowledge you, you would forget about. History of Art Patrick by Bishop John Fleming. Oh, John Fleming's yeah. book in Art Patrick is very good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's an excellent. And again, that was, he was very lucky when, when, when John was uh, here working in Limerick at the time before yeah. he went down to the Irish College in Rome. And, now we know he's up in, in Kilella, yeah, but yeah. he did that book at the time and he was very lucky. He only printed 500 copies, yeah. but he had them all sold before he, he was able to hand them out. Yeah. You know, everybody's already mentioned in the back of the book yeah. and it never really reached the shops yeah. as such. Mm -hmm. That history of, of, of Harbat, of, of yeah. Patrick, and that's in Harbat as well. Yeah. Lovely yeah. book that is. I'm lucky mm -hmm. I acquired I copied yeah. that a few years ago as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The man is dead now. And he, did a, he did a lovely history of the cathedral as well. Of where? St. John's Cathedral. Oh, he did? Yeah. yeah. And that sold and, very well. And the history of St. Munch's College and the history of the first bishop of Limerick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's yeah. a difficult book to read now, that book. Oh, it is, yeah. Very, very. I, we, I have it. I have, to, I have it and I have to admit I never finished yeah, it. Like, you know. he, um, yeah. he was able to go, he, when he was in the Irish College in Rome, he was able to go to um, into places to see what documents were there relating to Ireland yeah. and yeah. about this Bishop Gillet. Yeah. But, uh, and he mentions a lot of notes, there's all these little oodles and notes in it yeah. about various sources that he went to. Because, I mean, back book. years ago, he, I, I got a Latin, uh, a reference to a Latin document in the Vatican. 
concerning Glyn, you know, and uh, John Fleming was able to go in and access it and translate it from the Latin because it was all Latin and he, he had the facility to do that. Like. But it, it just goes to show, I'd always think of that for the man. Like, he could have said that to help with him, you know, you know, but he actually went and did it, you know, at the time. Uh, now, when he translated it, didn't mean much to me after that. Anyway, because I was kind of thinking, I was expecting a lot more uh, detail on it. And it wasn't something you could use, but at least he, he did it for me, you know. Um, but he, he's very willing to share his material, you know. Yeah. And uh, he, last time I met him was out. Uh, he, there was um, uh, a priest murdered in, uh, this is the bicentennial murder of a priest, Mulqueen, Mulqueen, out, yeah. uh, and, uh, out near Kilmarnock and in um, Mulgadden. And he came down and he celebrated the mass for the, and there was some of the descendants of the priest there. And uh, um, he, like, he's great man to give a sermon again, you know, because like Gerard of Tui, yeah. he brought the history into it and everything, you know. <laughs> he's, uh, he's, he gave a talk in Mulgadden school there about, Four yeah. years ago, was it about three, four about years ago? The of, about the farming of the diocese, yeah. Yeah, about the farming of the diocese. Yeah. And I said, I had a question for him. And he, oh God, he said, yeah. when I stood up, oh God, yeah. he said, yeah. what yeah. am I going to be asked by him? Yeah, yeah. The six, the six mark written. Three quarters of the audience was saying, you man, you man is going to ask something. Ask yeah, something cut, 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 cut version, yeah. I forget what it was now that I did ask him, but it was relevant to the diocese. So, it was about the farming of the diocese. Yeah. Actually, he gave a lecture on Raquel. He did yeah, not forget about that. They're built in nearly two years ago now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the last time I met him now. Yeah, yeah. yeah in, 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 and just to see his relation, um, yeah. Kevin Danaher. Kevin well, Danaher's Kevin, relation. Kevin Danaher, yeah. 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 Who his who his mother was related to, I didn't know that. Yeah. But you forget about him, Kevin Danaher. Yeah. Breaking the tears, that you forget about yeah. altogether. Oh, he did a lot of... I should read the night about a man called Dineen, who Kevin Danaher interviewed. Uh, you know, and uh, uh, like it's funny. <laughs> as actually, before I come on tonight, I was seeing a program that was done on up in Mayo, and it was about the railway. You know, and he said, "Did you ever travel on the railway?" He said, "I've got him not that old, you know, man." He said, "My mother travelled on." He said, and he got emotional. He said, "Up to the age of nine, he said, I never. My mother came back when I was nine and never knew her." He said, "She just walked to Scotland, walked to. Oh yeah. She come back once a year and." It wasn't until he was nine. He, 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 she came back for a couple of years then, and then she came back. And what did your father do? He said he was too lazy to even catch a cold. He said he was the laziest man you could find. He never did anything, you know. The mother did all, reared them and sent the money home, you know. Yeah. Uh, which was, which was in, interesting, you know, that um, uh, to hear a, a man describing about immigration. And like I went to school with a fellow, and. His father went off to England every year and came back, you know, in the winter time. He walked in England and came home, and um, that's how they were the family. You know, the mother, the mother had the other side, the, the father. You know, yeah. I suppose it was a, a happy marriage because they, they hadn't time to fight, like you know. Yeah, well, the only thing was with with you mentioned there about Scotland, mainly yeah. it's associated with, with counties in like Donegal, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them, and even down to Achill. But yeah. the Eckel drownings were now one time, but the, yeah. the train in Eckel, that all went over to Scotland. Oh, pick, pick picking bit Yeah, yeah. Can't believe, and living, living, living in harsh conditions, you know. Yeah. The, the bot bodies, or the body bankers, the bodies were the, yeah. uh, oh, they're just they're made out of mud and straw, like they're living in, and and uh, living in terrible conditions, like. You know? yeah. Yeah. But that's like the, the boys that were uh, that were on the farms that what's his name? Pat Feely wrote about. Yeah, the seven boys. The hiring fairs, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the, the way they were treated by families. Yeah. yeah. Well, well to do families that uh, the way they were treated and brought sure, up for a year. I saw a fellow called Michael McCarthy who wrote in the Olympic Journal about uh, he knew Pat Feely and he's still uh he's still friendly with Pat Feely's wife. He keeps contact with her. Uh is this Michael from Patino? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's he wrote, wrote about Pat. And, uh, and he's up, yeah, he's up in Wicklow now. Yeah. Um, he came down the night. He came he, down to talk about Jim Kemi to yeah. the society one night. Uh, yeah, Michael Michael gives a copy of the journal every year to Pat Feely's wife. But I was telling him about, I think you were there as well. We went out one night and the library had him come down to give a lecture on the servant boys. And 
he, he got ambushed outside of Lake, and he was, you know, and, and nothing to do with him. What to admit know. it, like? What? Some of the families don't like to admit the way they treated. Yeah. And yeah. we're talking yeah. about the 40s, like, you know, yeah. the 40s, the 40s yeah. into the 50s, yeah. the hiring fairs. It's really yeah. not so long ago, like, you know. I remember, man. I, I, I keep forgetting to mention that oh, yeah. here with the Limerick Historical Society, talking talking history, we think, anyway. And if you want to get in touch with us, we're on lilmedia.tv. That's L-I-R, think of the children in there. And uh, you can go to the our YouTube channel, which is on Lil Media TV. And please subscribe. There's a little button down in the corner, a little red button. You just click on that. Doesn't cost anything, and you won't you won't be billed for it in, in six months time. Yeah, it's, it's very. I did it during the week. It's very easy yeah. to do it actually. Yeah, just just yeah. click it on, and yeah. people because when people hear the word subscribe, you see it sounds like yeah. How much yeah. is this going to cost me? You know. Yeah. Everything. Well, I think people are used to YouTube. Like if you, it's like yeah. liking a page in Facebook. If you subscribe, it means that you're, you know, you're interested in it. Like, yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to get. We'll just before we finish up. We'll have to get um. A little clock here, not to get some kind of a little clock. I should be looking up at the clock to see the time we start and the time we finished. Yeah, yeah. I tell with the bones of an hour anyway, talking yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, but there's all these of other uh, histories out the time we haven't even mentioned. Oh, yeah, yeah. You go home yeah. now or afterwards and say, I never thought of mentioning this, you know. Yeah. I'm trying yeah. to do a scan around the county in my um, own mind. Well, we have Penny Corona's book on a ski. Oh, yeah, I should another yeah. one. I don't forget about yeah. it. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, I'm thinking of what villages and towns are on the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Lockall, there's a lot written in Lockall. It's and the history of Lockall and Benny Hale by Gerald yeah. Cotton. Uh, yeah. Really forget about them now. And yeah. even uh, Gerald Cotton. That's the same. Lockall and Benny Hale. Yeah. 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 yeah, that you forget about. There's so yeah. many other ones out there, I'm sure. There's... And uh, recently, a history of Kerry Kerry, you know, by Jerry McMahon's daughter. Yeah, I forgot about her now as well. So, you know, yeah, Mary, Mary Curry, K U R Y. Yeah, yeah. But oh, Jerry was very good. He was yeah. a very good local man too for local knowledge, Jerry was. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and gentleman. You know. could, see, could see his sister carrying on the tradition. He is. Actually, he was he was one of the first men I saw ever saw to, to record a graveyard. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gravestones yeah. he did. Yeah. I remember that. Mm -hmm. And he wrote to me I uh, one time as well, mentioning houses that just in case I, I didn't know about, you know, that um in his area. It yeah. weren't very big houses, but I had a yeah. bit of in them. I still have that letter at home that yeah. he wrote to me. And uh, yeah. but like that, I remember, I remember him. Said, I remember him saying as well. That he found your your cousin, Clark, the the the, yeah. the name oh, on the headstone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, up as far as Carry like, you know. Yeah, funny, yeah. really. That, yeah. But yeah. That, that, the the rules of history is out there now. That I'm sure we have uh, we've forgotten about it. Yeah, I have to. Religion. I only have my headphones on. I stand up and look at the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> You're better than me. I, yeah. I know people to find things. Yeah. I, what I came across was a story from other night. What I came across last night was uh, the story of the Lady Freemason down in in uh, in Donnerell. And she oh, was yeah. the other night in the program on television. That's was a went to Donnerell Court. I got, uh, I, got, I, got a I got a message actually on Facebook and said about a day later. Are you watching uh, about <laughs> Donnerell? But yeah. I was. I think I told you I was down there and. Um, a lot, unfortunately, a lot of the artifacts they call them or the furniture in the house are brought in. Good, yeah. yeah. From Bowen's Court and places like but that. Most of the sold, most of the stuff was sold out for sale. Yeah. By the St. Edgers and they were there, you know. This, yeah, yeah. Last, she was there actually, a daughter of the last woman, I think. She looked like she was about 90 anyway in the, yeah. in the television the other night. Oh, and, right. uh, she was a, a St. Ledger. Although they're still they're in America and they're in England. But yeah. they're great legacy. After starting what's known as the steeplechase, first of all, yeah, from, from that at the bottom end, and also yeah. the St. Ledger itself, yeah, which is still going, That's you know, right. because there were the here St. Ledger was only he was only interested in one thing that was houses, yeah, he was only interested in. But they made a lovely job of the house now, restoring it. But it's a pity that they couldn't get the fun, the actual, it is, the, it is, yeah. the, the, like the, the OPW have, I didn't know this, but the lady there told me the OPW keep. A lot of furniture in storage. They buy up furniture, and when they done up houses, then they bring them in. Yeah. You know, like mirrors and yeah. you know. Yeah. But they did get a few things back now that were good. You know, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Tom. Okay, we'll Tony. Yeah. Thank you again, anyway, for being on Tom. Okay, Tony. Uh, just yeah. get our, our people out there again before we finish. 
if anybody wants to join the Limerick Historical Society, they'll have to go onto the, the website, Limerick Historical Society. And email, they, or email Limerick Historical Society at gmail.com. Gmail.com, yeah, yeah. If you want to know something. But there's nothing happening at the moment anyway. No. You know, unfortunately. We're yeah. missing so much. Yeah. You know. But uh, again, uh, thank you very much, Tom, for, for coming on. Okay, Tony. Out there, yeah. there's, um, if people want to uh, get in touch, learnmedia.tv, or you can go to the YouTube channel, which is uh, Learn Media TV, and you'll be able to see my post anywhere and uh, give a laugh. And if there's anything people want to know, get in touch with us. If yeah. there's something you, want, or something you want to argue with us, well, because it's great to be corrected. Yeah. I love to be yeah. corrected, because yeah. at the bottom of it, you get the truth when, yeah. you, when you're corrected. You know, yeah. the, uh, people say, well, and you can prove that person wrong sometimes, whether it's an old fable or, you know, or, or the rubbish yeah. you're talking. Yeah. Yeah. Like That's tunnels nice. going from, tunnels going from monasteries to castles. And oh, yeah, yeah. There was some ingenious the of, together. The pot of gold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go on, good night, John. Okay, great, Tony. Yeah.